going on today guys it's joe the pro here back at it again with another video before this one starts today i need you to please drop a like on this video hit subscribe and hit the post notification bell today what we are going to be covering is the use of the control switches on the machine the b s and t switches that are located on the panel to the right or the left of the pin elevator wheel also you have your reset button on this panel too we will also be going over the steps inside the chassis when you turn it on. And what I mean by that is if you have the chassis upgraded uh, circuit boards, you will see this number inside the chassis. And if you notice, there is a series of steps before it completes the whole cycle. So you have a series of three switches on each machine. You have a B switch, an S switch, and a T switch. And then you had the reset button, obviously, but I'm not going to cover that because it's pretty obvious the function of that just cycles the machine. The B switch will actually turn the power off to the entire machine. As you can see, if I hit that switch, the whole machine, including the deck light, the sweep, and table motor all are powered off, including the chassis as well. The next switch, the S switch, is for the sweep motor. If I turn the S switch off, you, you will lose your sweep motor. So you can see I'm pulling on the cam and nothing happens. And your last switch to the right is your T switch. Your T switch turns your power off to the table motor. So if I turn that one off, I will go up to my table cam and nothing happens. So you also have a power switch on the chassis. Um, it's pretty ineffective because you have your power switch on the control panel there. So I'm not really sure why AMF did that in the first place. But it's there. So it is an alternative power shut off. So I'm going to power the chassis back on. And we are going to run the machine to recycle. And I will explain each step. When you first drop the sweep down, you are going to be at step two. So I will hit the reset button and all that's going to happen when it gets to step two is the sweep's just going to be in, in its guard position when it first drops. So I'll hit the reset button now. Oops. I'll turn the S and T switches off instead of the B switch so you can see the chassis. Button. So I have the S and T switches off and you see how that move to the number three, the step three? That is indicating that the table needs to run. So when I turn the switches on, the table will go down and pick up the pins. Step four is the sweep, sweeping the pins off. And five and six is just the table coming back down again and the sweep going up. So when it gets to step, so it's on step three. So the table will go down. And step four, the sweep will run. And when it gets to step five, it, the sweep is back at guard position. And six and seven is for the table run, returning to its home position and the sweep returning to its home position. So now we're on second ball and we're at step seven. We are ready for the bowler to bowl again. And when they do, the machine will cycle and it will go to step eight and nine. When it gets to step nine, that's just kind of like how step two was. The sweep will be down in its guard position. So the sweep is in its guard position and it will sweep the pins off when it gets to C. And the table will spot pins. And the sweep will return up and it will go back to zero. Another common thing that happens is, um, let's use an example, let's say a sweep gets hit and you have to crank it, it falls off the track and the machine shuts off and you have to put the crank the sweep and put it back on the track and it's all out of sequence and it's not at zero. So I'll just run it to second ball to get it at num step number seven and we will go from there. So we're at second ball, step seven. So let's say the sweep got hit right before it went up and we're at step seven. So the way to reset it back to zero is by not the red button, not by pushing the red button, but this little black button below the red button. That is what you push to control your steps. And that's, 
you, if you hold it down, it will return back to zero. But before doing that, especially if you have pins in the wheel, you will want to turn your S and T switches off and you will also want to unplug your back end motor because what happens is when I, so I'm going to hold the button down to get it back to zero. So the machine is back at zero. It thinks it is on, it, it, what the machine thinks is the sweep just came up, it's back on first ball and it's ready to feed pins again. But sometimes that's not always the case if you have to reset it manually. Sometimes you'll already have all 10 pins in the cups but what the machine thinks is that it has to feed a whole extra set. But all that'll, all that'll happen is you'll get a double feed. So that is why we unplugged the back end motor before re resetting the chassis back to zero. Well, all you need to do before plugging it back in is just run the pin counter through a cycle. Once you get back to zero, you will notice that your solenoid disengages and you are good to go as long as your sweep is back to its home position and your table's back to its home position. What you will also notice is if your chassis is not at zero, um, you will also not always have access to your sweep cam and your table cam because it will think that it is in the middle of a cycle if it's at any different number than zero and seven. If it is at four, it will think that the table is running or the sweep has to come up. So one or the other may not have power going to it. So that is why it is always important to make sure, like especially after a sweep gets hit, um, if the table's down or the sweep is still down, that is why you need to reset your chassis back to zero before you have access to your sweeper table motors. Once you reset your chassis back to zero using this button here, you will then have access to your sweep and table motors and you can use the cam switches to send them back to their home positions. And after you run your pin counter through a cycle, you can then plug your back end motor back in. And also don't forget to turn your switches back on. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to answer any questions. If you have any requests for future videos, please also comment those down below or you can email me or you can now post them in our Facebook group, um, also called Joe the Pro. And yeah, that's about it. So please like, subscribe, and peace and do it like a pro and we will cover more material in the next video. Thanks for watching and always remember to do it like a pro. We'll see you guys later.